All right, boys. Um, today I don't know if you can hear it. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of sick. I got a I got a sore throat, but we can ignore that. I'm gonna do something that you've never you've never seen before. A, a Linux user reacting to the uh, the Linus Tech Tips the Linux Gaming Challenge. I feel mostly fine. Don't worry about it. I I'm sorry about the the poor voice quality. All right. Um. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Death to Microsoft! The open source community is ready to send you to your grave! Your tyrannical reign over PC gamers is at an end! Freedom! Nice meme. Is what I would say if I lived with Linus Wallace the third over here in Fantasyland where any of that was true. I don't know. What in the intro wasn't true? I guess the death to Microsoft thing probably isn't true. But their tyrannical reign over the PC gaming community? That's, that's kind of true, let's be honest. That's just true right now, alright? In part two, Luke and I are going to be taking it to the next level by not just gaming on Linux, but by recording and streaming our gameplay to viewers on Twitch. Now I'd be lying if I said I'm not expecting some speed bumps. We'll need comms to chat and collaborate with our fellow creators, and software that's capable of capturing our gameplay, audio, and face cam. Now, I first switched uh, probably earlier this year sometime. I was a Windows boy before that, and uh, I've had to go through all the same challenges. Comms and game capture were really easy. Discord is just in the package manager. It works straight out of the box, at least all the features I use. Game capture, also really easy. E uh, OBS was just in my package manager. I just had to install it. Um, audio capture, I had a harder time getting my audio quality dialed in so it sounded okay. But after some fiddling, I got that to work. And no points will be awarded for having an ugly or bad sounding stream. It's got to look every bit as legit from a viewer perspective as it did on Windows. I agree with that. It should look and sound the same as it does on Windows. Immediately, I started overthinking things. Sometimes that's the problem with knowing just enough to be dangerous. I tried to apt-get OBS, the industry standard for desktop capture and streaming, in the terminal, only to discover that Manjaro, the Linux distribution that I'm using, doesn't come with apt because apt is for managing packages on Debian and related OSs. Oops. Making life more difficult, the message that comes up when you try to execute the command doesn't say, hey, you should probably be using Pac-Man, you dunce. It tries to install some kind of dependency for apt, then just quietly fails and prompts you to do the same thing again when you- this, I have no clue what he's talking about here. I get using apt-get on accident. Now, I do this a lot because I have a few Raspberry Pis set up uh, headlessly, and I SSH into them and do stuff, and they're just running the default Raspbian, which is based on Debian. So apt-get is how you install stuff on, on that operating system. Sometimes I forget when I've exited SSH, and I just sudo apt-get install on my main computer. I have never once had a try to install some sort of dependency for that and quietly fail and prompt me to do that again i have no idea what he's talking about here it does not make sense to me so check this out this is what it does every time i have run this command on my manjaro system by accident with some exceptions for example the nvenc new encoder does doesn't show up as an option, which appears to be down to NVIDIA's poop-tastic drivers on Linux. Side note here. Okay, this I also don't understand. So I can't change this because I'm recording right now. But if you look at both uh, streaming and recording, you can say you can see NVENC here. And I saw another YouTuber mention something about it might having to do with having an RTX card. But I have an RTX card and it's worked fine for me the entire th time. I don't know why his NVENC uh, uh, would not, isn't showing up in here. I always kind of assumed that the Linux community was grousing about NVIDIA primarily for their locked down proprietary approach to things, and that it had less to do with the actual quality of the product. Now, I properly understand that it is definitely both. True. As mentioned, core product functionality from like a couple of years ago is missing, the control panel looks like it's from 10 years ago, and the interface is kind of confusing. But True. It's just obvious that the Linux software has never gotten the kind of TLC from the UX team that the Windows software does. This is true, and it's, uh, it's really annoying. 
because it's not going to get the same treatment as the Windows version does unless it has the same amount of people that Windows does. And that's not going to happen until programs start giving Linux the same treatment that they do on Windows. Infinite loop, baby. Start off GitHub and run it with no indication given whatsoever for how exactly to run a script. Even the process of downloading it was unintuitive. And I know GitHub is for developers and not for end users, but it's really hard to hide behind that shield when it took me less than two days to run into a situation where I had to use it. I mean, at that point, if GitHub is only for developers, then desktop Linux is only for developers. You can't have it both ways. Him not saying that this was saving as an HTML document, I think that's on him. And then I don't blame him for not, for not knowing how to run a script. I had to Google that. But I've had to use GitHub on Windows before, and it is weird to use. I don't think it's fair to put this on Linux because I've had to use GitHub for Windows also. Is Windows only for developers then since I had to use things from GitHub? I, I don't think I could make that argument. So I don't... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that argument's really fair. Anyway, I found a guide on how to run a script. I'm grateful for that, but I'm frustrated by the condescending tone. I mean, my assumption that a file with a .sh extension sending tone. Now, maybe I'm just bad at social cues or picking up emotion in words or something, but I don't see anything here that's condescending. Besides maybe the unlike some silly operating systems. I mean, my assumption that a file with a .sh extension would behave as I would expect it to and launch in some kind of script running application doesn't seem that unreasonable. Newsflash, random contributor, you can also change a file extension in Windows and it will attempt to launch in the default program for that file type. It actually serves exactly the same fundamental purpose, hinting at the contents of the file. The only difference is that these hints for the user are also used as hints for the operating system. It's actually a lot more convenient than digging into the properties of the file to find out what it does. I'm not sure that digging into the properties of the file to find out what it does is that fair either, because it's a right click and then you go to permissions, right? These are the properties of the file. You have to do this exact same thing in Windows to change the uh, extension type, right? And you can see, this even took my extension type as a hint to the operating system. This seems to work exactly the way he wants it to, except for the .sh, but it defaults to a text editor. I haven't used Windows in like eight months, but I'm pretty sure the default for batch files was to open in the text editor too, and you had to open the terminal to run them, right? Anyway, pompous tone aside, that contributor did help me figure out my GitHub download. So it turns out that right click save target as gets you an HTML file. Right click save link as always gives you an HTML, HTML file. I, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not trying to be mean to Linus, but I'm pretty sure this is just him not paying attention to what things say before he clicks them. Because save link as has always downloaded things as an HTML file. It's always done that. The most notable issue I had was that my audio devices were just kind of screwy in OBS. My voice came across very unnaturally deep and it sounded like my mic input had been duplicated. My voice just feels deep right now. I don't know if I've got something lodged or what. And yeah. Chat was. I've had OBS do weird stuff with audio sometimes too. Sometimes it will take the desktop audio like where it's supposed to record sounds from the desktop and it will just both of those will be my mic and maybe that's what happened here i don't know if that's a problem with like pulse audio or obs but yeah that's just it just bugs up sometimes at least it does once you find the hidden button in pamac to search snap flat pack and arch user repository entries um i i have a few problems with this um let me show you this is Pamac. This is the thing he's talking about. Now, to enable flat packs and snaps, you go, you click up here, and you go to preferences, and you go to third party, and it's in here. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever considered a normal settings menu as tucked away 
and hidden. Once I found the super convenient per application volume mixer in the bottom right corner. The interface is kind of kludgy, like scrolling with your mouse wheel scrolls through both the audio devices and the levels of the individual devices, which is not great. Yeah, that's, that's a little annoying. The good news though, is that a shocking number of experiences don't start and end with, sorry, you can't do this. So stay tuned for part three. We're yeah, so that's a fair point. And he's right there with the point at the end. A shocking amount of things don't start and end with, you just can't do this. And something else you have to keep in mind is we are brute forcing games that were fundamentally not designed to work on this operating system. And we are forcing them to work. Because the amount of things that you can get, you can force to work that are made from Windows just in that manner taking in all of the steps that have to go right for that to work is something seriously impressive. Um, subscribe if you want more content from me. I don't normally do reactions and I'm probably not going to start doing them very regularly. Anyway, I'll see you all later.